All right, Jules, enough Champions League. How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, Gav. This was way back on Monday, but Liverpool beat Leicester City 3-0 to move within a point of Newcastle and Manchester United. Jules, seven wins on the yeah. bounce to Jurgen Klopp. What's going right? Um, a lot of things. To start with, I think Trent Alexander-Arnold playing in midfield and getting more and more comfortable in that position. We mentioned it before and talk about the balance to find between when they have the ball, when they don't, where is Trent, when they lose the ball. Who covers? I think Konate has been magnificent in those seven wins. I really do. Not that he's played all of them, but he's been when he's played, he's been great. And I think he can be the guy kind of covering for Trent on the right hand side, coming back, centre back with Virgil, all of that. Mo Salah is in great form, and you know, when Mo Salah is in that kind of form, it's good. And Curtis Jones, I mean, the second goal, especially, moment of brilliance. So well done to them. Newcastle and Manchester United do have a game in hand with Newcastle kicking off in a few hours on Thursday night against Brighton. Gab, we love percentages. So give me yours. Who's going to finish top four between Newcastle, Liverpool and United? Okay, so I looked at the schedule. Liverpool have Villa at home and Southampton away. Southampton yeah. already relegated. Obviously, Villa at home is big for them to get the six points that they need. Um, Newcastle have Brighton at home, which I don't think is straightforward at all. They have Leicester who are fighting to avoid relegation. And they have Chelsea, who I have no, no idea. They're fighting to impress Pochettino. So I think they have a harder run-in. United have Bournemouth away. Bournemouth, I think, are safe at this stage. Yeah. Uh, they have Chelsea at home and uh, Fulham at home, which I think Fulham's, Fulham will be on the beach by then, we think. Yeah. So I'm going Manchester United, 85%. Ooh. Newcastle, 75%. Liverpool, okay. 40%. Okay. Ivan Tony has been hit with an eight-month ban after pleading guilty to 262 betting-related infractions. This is betting on football. Yeah. Jules, this is serious punishment. And again, difficult to compare sports. And in the U.S., you might get a lifetime ban for this. Here, it's eight months. Yeah. Um, I think it's a strong punishment for something for... That for from a behavior from him that shouldn't have, I think he knew you, you could not, as a professional player, bet on matches. I would hope he knew uh, that. No, I think he knew. Everybody knows. He still went ahead to an extent. I mean, 262 infraction is not just me and my mate, you know, at the pub on Sunday, we just put a bet on so and so winning the game 2 0. This is this is this is this is bad. This is like an addiction almost. The issue I have, in a way, with the ban, I've got nothing against the long ban. I think he should get punished. He was punished. Is that if you compare it with other bans before, especially the one against racism, or in cases of racism, the John Terry one, and they're very different, and it's a different time, I know. And it's not 262. It's not 262. However, it still feels very... Uh, what's the word I was looking for uh, in English? Unbalanced? Unbalanced. Or not a equitable? Bit disproportionate. In, if you compare... Yeah. Maybe you sh we should not compare them because no. they're different offences. They are different offences. If I want to be but, a little cynical about it, I might suggest that if Premier League players regularly racially abuse opponents, it's terrible and so on. But from a business perspective, yeah, doesn't necessarily undermine the, majority, the integrity of the game. And if Premier League players regularly go and bet on football matches including ones they play in, then you have a serious problem for the whole league and it yeah. goes out the window. And it's this could true. just it's be true. about money. I mean, uh, I also think, I don't know why it took them so long to come to this conclusion of the eight months. Yeah. Um, I also wonder if maybe they said, like, let's wait till Brentford are, are safe and then give the eight-month penalty. So they could have easily done this like a month ago, yeah, maybe. maybe to mitigate this a little yeah. bit. Qatar Sheikh Yassim has reportedly made a final bid for Manchester United on the 11th hour. Gab, you love talking about this. It's only been six months since the club was put up for sale. I, I, I love this story because <laughs> this confirms what we already said, right? The deadline yeah. doesn't mean anything. The no. deadline passed. And that was last week. So let me make another bid. Oh, it's my final, final bid. Is this your uh, final offer? I, this, this is pretty ridiculous. I... We don't know how much the bid is. Maybe it's more money. Maybe enough to sway the Glazers. The Glazers don't have to sell. The Glazers can finance. We've been through all these scenarios. If you're the Glazers, you're just sitting there and then you're going to have a little family meeting and yeah. decide what do we want to do. Um, I think one of the things that the Glazers are concerned about is the Premier League now are under the spotlight for new owners after what happened to Newcastle and so on. They could be asking a bazillion questions of Sheikh Jassim. Um, which could just leave this whole thing to be stretched out for a very, very long time. It's already yeah, been nearly six months yeah. since they put up the club for sale. And the other Glazers might be like, we just want our money, so go with the other guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. If the bids aren't that different. 
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.